Harwood Air Force Base on October 27th at 0937 hours. An aircraft of the Strategic Air Command had crashed and burned. A valuable aircraft and some infinitely more valuable human lives have been lost. My name is Murray, Colonel John Murray, crash investigator. It was my job to find out why. There was a great deal at stake, a man's reputation and the national defense. Established positive identification yet? Have they any idea which one they saved yet? I see. Yes, I think we can break Colonel Murray loose. John Murray. That's right. Get back to you later. Yes, oh, sir. Colonel, sit down. SAC lost a B-47 on a march. They were going into Harwood on an emergency. They crashed just short of the runway. One of the men ejected on the downwind leg. His chute partially open, but he's in a very critical condition, although he's still alive. The others are dead, sir? There were four others in the crew. Uh, Flight Commander Major Dorfman. Sam Dorfman? Did you know him? He was my co-pilot. I was at dinner with him Thursday night, with Sam and Pollock. Their anniversary. Observer, First Lieutenant Harold Rennie, co-pilot Captain Charles Hartman, and there was also an instructor observer along, Major Theodore Curtis. Which one got out, sir? No identification yet. SAC is sending an investigation board down under Colonel Thompson. They ask us to cooperate. How soon can you leave? Well, Major Stutz can take over the report I'm doing now, sir. Two hours. Good. I'll have your orders cut for you right away. I was packed, briefed, cleared, and airborne by 12.35 hours. At 13.28 hours, I touched down at Harwood. Hello, Colonel. Hello, John. You got here in a hurry. You found out who the survivor is yet? Lieutenant Rennie, the observer. You know, if the observer's station ejected upward instead of down, he'd have made it safely even at that altitude. Still alive? Well, they're not sure whether you'll make it. You can talk to the flight surgeon later. Nobody else got out. The pilot ejected just short of the end of the runway. Barely got clear of the chair before he hit. The co-pilot and instructor observer crashed. You mean the Dorfman got out with his crew still in the ship? You knew Dorfman, didn't you? Yes, sir. That's right. Well, let's go see what it looks like. Any luck, Gene? No, not yet. I had a quick look at all six engines. So far, I don't see any signs of in-flight burning, but we're just beginning to get the pattern now. Oh, Colonel John Murray, flight safety. Gene Fuller from the Seattle plant. Mr. Fuller, glad to know you, Colonel. Any preliminary theories? No, I want the power plant people to check these engines. Well, you need cranes for the base. Doctor, this is Colonel John Murray, 
Division of Flight Safety. Doctor, how do you do? Doctor Evers is our flight surgeon. He was actually on the flight strip at the time. You saw the ship. Did it seemed like a normal approach? Well, I guess for a bomber it was. I haven't had too much experience with anything but fighters. Seemed to me he was a little low. I saw the observer eject and the canopy go. After that, fire just seemed to boil up out of the cockpit, fire and black smoke. Well, you saw the crash then? No, just after he went on, finally went below my line of vision. I heard the crash, though. Flame shot over 100 feet or so in the air. See that uh, stake over there with the red streamer? That's where we picked up the observer. Any chance to talk to him, get a statement? He's in a pretty bad way, Colonel. If he pulls through the night, maybe you can see him in the morning. He hit hard. The rest of them hit harder. The pilot, Colonel Dorfman, was Colonel Murray's co-pilot. Sorry. He bailed out just before impact, I understand. Everyone thought he was going to bring the ship in. I don't know why he didn't. Are you uh, sure it was Dorfman? Oh, yes. We just made identification from his wedding ring. He landed about 200 feet from the point of initial impact. Of what we assume was the point of initial impact. Yes, right over here. It was so close to the runway. Why didn't he land? Well, I guess when a man's on fire, his first instinct is to save himself. That wouldn't be Sam's instinct. There must have been something wrong with the ejection mechanism. He didn't have a chance ejecting. Another few seconds might have saved three lives. Sam had a reason. I just know he did. Hello, Polly? This is John. I guess it doesn't look good to tell how sorry I am. It's too hard for me to believe it. There couldn't be some mistake. They're sure it's Sam. I'm sure, Polly. I, I wish there was some easier way. Yeah, but there isn't. John! Meeting started. Uh, look, Polly, is there anybody with you now? Ellie Johnson, Captain Johnson's wife, is here. She said she'd look after little Sam, so... She'll stay as long as I need her. Did the doctor give you anything to sleep? Oh, that's good. Well, now you take it now, and I'll call you first thing in the morning. Sure, of course. Good night, Polly. From the reports of eyewitnesses and from the field measurements of the plotting group, we have a fair idea of the sequence of the crash. Now, there was no smoke or fire observed until after the pilot's transmission. We're on fire. That was approximately here at 0928 hours. Here, just before the ship turned on base, the observer ejected. Approximately 800 feet altitude. Here, the canopy was jettisoned. Now, after the ship turned on base, smoke and flame was observed billowing out of the cockpit by the tower operator here and by Dr. Evers on the flight strip. After the ship turned on final, the pilot ejected here. Have we had a report from the systems group on the ejection mechanism? No, sir, but I'm sure that it wasn't operating properly. Have you any reason to suppose that, Colonel? No, sir, except that Major Dorfman was my friend, and I know that he wouldn't have abandoned him. Your friendship for Major Dorfman is not in question, Colonel. Major Dorfman may have been guilty of an error in judgment. If, as it appears, he could have set his ship on the ground and saved the lives of two of his crew, it was a very grave error. We're here to try to discover the cause of the fire. Yes, sir. Immediately after the pilot ejected, the aircraft went into a near vertical bank. The right wing was the first aircraft structure to contact the ground at a point 1,725 feet short of the approach end of the runway. If we could find out from the observer what was said on the intercom where he bailed out, I mean, he could solve this whole problem. Colonel Edwards, how soon can we speak to Lieutenant Rennie? It's hard to say, Colonel. I'll be notified the minute there's any change in his condition, but, well, I seriously doubt he'll be out of coma before tomorrow morning. I see. Gentlemen, SAC has reduced its accident rate in eight years from 60 per 100,000 hours to five per 100,000 hours. It's our job to bring it to zero. 
B-47 is the backbone of the Strategic Air Command. You've got to keep it safe and in the air. That's all, gentlemen. That first meeting broke up early. There was no evidence yet to evaluate. I kept reminding myself that the fire was the important thing. But I kept thinking of Sam. He had a distinguished record. Had he spoiled it in the last 30 seconds of his life by abandoning his crew, this I had to know. The plotting group had completed the scatter chart. Fuller brought it to my quarters, and we spent two pots of coffee and the rest of the night studying it. There's no question about it. The explosion was on impact. Well, how soon do you think we'll hear from the systems people about the ejection mechanism? Well, what's that got to do with it? Oh, you mean about your friend bailing out before his crew? There has to be a reason. Look, we got enough troubles without bringing in a personal problem. If I could just talk to Lieutenant Rennie It'd just long... still be a fuel line, even if it didn't blow in flight. The only trouble is there's no fuel line in that crawlway. It's getting daylight. They should have most of the parts hauled in by now. Let's go over there and take a look at them. Well, we get a clearer look if we had a few hours sleep. Uh, maybe you're right. All right, let's meet at 8. Hello? Is this Colonel Murray? She's at the gate here at the base? Yeah, I'll be right there. I'll see you later. Ali, you shouldn't be here. I had to come, John. The chaplain's meeting me here. Where's Ellie Johnson? She came with me. She's at the motel. John, was it very... I mean, how... Well, he, uh... He bailed out at a low altitude. Too low. It was very quick. The others? Well, two of them didn't get out. The observer's in critical condition, but he's alive. Sam bailed out before his crew? Why? That's what we're trying to find out, Polly. The observer should be able to tell us. They're blaming Sam for what happened. Nobody's blaming anybody for anything. We're just trying to get it straight. I want Sam cleared as badly as you do. You just got to take care of yourself. Why? For what? You know that answer better than I. Colonel Murray, telephone for you, sir. It's Dr. Edwards. Yeah, that must be about the observer. We were waiting for him to come out of a coma. I hate to leave you now, but I... I think you could take care of yourself. This is really important. You do your job. I'll be all right. All right, thanks. Call me later. Yes, Doctor. I should have left to her when I came down here. I'll be right there. It won't do any good. What do you mean? Lieutenant Rennie just died. as to how the fire started? Well, we know it started in the crawlway. That rules out it having started in the forward wheel well where there are fuel lines. But as of right now, we're stuck, so I'm out looking for inspiration. Well, maybe I'll have something for you when the autopsy reports come in, but I doubt it. What's this for? Oh, this is all we found of the co-pilot's helmet. I'm trying to locate the rest of it. Sir, nothing's been moved without being plotted and tagged. This is way outside the burn area. But look at it. What is it? Well, it was a cushion, a standard aircraft cushion. 
Caught fire in the crash and been thrown clear. Uh-uh. The main fire after the tanks exploded was after impact. This is outside the burn area, so it must have been burning before the crash. This groove is strange. Yeah, it looks like it's cut out. No, it was burned out. Sergeant, find Mr. Fuller in the hangar. Ask him to join me as quickly as he can. I'll be at that 47 out in the flight line. Yes, sir. Obviously, you think you found something. Well, doctor, sometimes you get lucky. I've been out looking for inspiration, and maybe this is it. <laughs> John, what have you got? Come on up here and take a look. Now, that's how the fire started. How? Oh. Well, you see this ring clamp? Well, it worked loose, and the air from this duct blew across the cushion. Now, this duct brings hot air from the engines into the air conditioning system for heating. Well, a loose clamp would explain how the smoke got sucked into the air conditioning system. But it wouldn't tell us how the fire got started. Well, what about spontaneous combustion? The air is 450 to 500 degrees. I doubt if that temperature could cause a fire. And I'm sure a cushion couldn't cause the kind of fire they had. You see this oxygen line? Yeah. It's under extremely high pressure. Even a tiny pinhole would supply enough oxygen into the fire to do the job. Well, the only question is, will hot air alone be enough to start a blaze? Well, only one way to find out. Let's go try it, huh? Actually, that's longer than the entire time the plane was flying. It sure doesn't seem to be catching. Heat alone doesn't seem to be enough. Let's try a little oxygen with it. Well, oxygen won't help unless there's a fire to feed. Well, let's try it anyway. Well, I guess that scratches your theory. Get it off, boys. Come on over here. We've come up with something strange. What's that? When they jettisoned the canopy, they didn't blow it off following normal procedure. It was opened manually. Why? I don't know. When they turned the base leg, they jettisoned it manually. Well, they had to. Once the normal ejection sequence is broken, the canopy can't be blown off. That's pretty dangerous procedure. Well, what's your theory? I wish I had one. I'm gonna go take a look at that B-47 on the line again, just for inspiration. Wanna take a walk? Colonel Murray. Autopsy report. Anything helpful? Nothing significant, so far as I can tell, but we'll know something more when we get the report from the toxicologist. Oh, thanks. I know no one's ever thought of putting a fire warning system in the crawlway. Except it's not a logical place for a fire to start. But then accidents are never very logical. Now, Gene, let's, let's try and reconstruct what happened here. Oh, I forgot. Another thing we found. The shutoff valves and the air conditioner were closed at all stations. You mean you think they were getting smoke through there? Maybe, but how? Where was the smoke coming from? All right, now. Let's just wait a minute. Now, the instructor observer was sitting here. Uh -huh. Now, let's suppose he felt heat through that pressure door, and he opened it to find out where the fire was coming from. Now, look, look. I know it's bad procedure. But when he opened the door, Smoke filled in the cockpit, and that's when Sam radioed, we're on fire. So they opened the canopy a crack to get rid of the smoke. Now, unable to breathe and not able to see the instruments, you might do it. He created a chimney effect, which actually sucked the fire into the cockpit. And that would fit the burn pattern on the bodies. Yeah, but it still doesn't explain why they didn't eject. Now, after ordering bailout, Sam had to get rid of that canopy manually. Now, that takes time. It's also very dangerous. You never know what a canopy is going to do when you jettison it that way. Now, that's it. When that canopy was jettisoned, it dished and hit the co-pilot on the head. Sam was waiting for the co-pilot, and the co-pilot was already dead. Even on fire, Sam would have never abandoned his crew. Well, I doubt if you'll ever be able to prove that. And more to the point, that isn't our primary problem. We're here for one purpose, to find the cause of the fire and to prevent future fires like it. Yeah. All right, let's go. 
Detail a men and go back out to the crash site. I want you to search that area a thousand yards back, all along that flight path, until you find that missing piece of the co-pilot's helmet. Yes, sir. Thousand yards back. That's right. Where do we go for inspiration now? Well, we seem to be running out of inspiration. Let's go back to the hangar. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, Gene. Why don't I get my cap? Testing a beautiful new cushion. After a cushion's been used, it gets filthy. And more important than that, it gets oil on it. Yeah, oxygen and oil will burn even without heat. Let's go. only one way to clear Sam's name. We had to find a missing helmet before the final meeting. Yes, sir? Did you find anything? Not yet, sir. We've gone over the field twice. Well, keep looking. Go back a couple hundred feet if you have to. Yes, sir. As soon as you find anything, get it to me. I understand, sir. If we find anything. All right, fellas, let's start all over again. <laughs> There's no question in my mind now as the cause of this crash. A series of coincidences, but a deadly combination. If the ring clamp on the air duct hadn't come loose, it wouldn't have happened. If there hadn't been a leak in the oxygen line, it wouldn't have happened. If the cushion had been clean, it wouldn't have happened. A chain of circumstances has been repeated three times that we know of. This must never happen again. I suggest that this board recommend that the B-47 crawlway be made a routine inspection point and issue appropriate orders that no loose gear ever be stored there. Come in, Sergeant. I think very good. found this where you said, Colonel. Thank you, Sergeant. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. helmet. It's been broken into three pieces. This proves that the co-pilot was already dead, hit by the canopy, and Major Dortmund ejected. There was no neglect of responsibility. Polly, how are you? I'm fine now. Really, I am. Your calls help me so much. We're just closing the investigation now. Then you found the cause. Happen. Well, it won't help to go into details now, but the most important thing for the both of us is that Sam didn't abandon his crew. He stayed until the last possible moment. Thanks, John. That means more than I can say. I won't keep you. I'll call you later. Oh, Polly, it's not much to offer you, but this kind of accident won't ever happen again. I'll be back in a moment to tell you more about Colonel Murray. Being the cause of past failures, Colonel Murray and others like him in the office of the Inspector General help to prevent future accidents. Their work saves countless lives in this age of flight. 